There are many different words which we can use to describe different kinds of reactions. One of the ones I've previously talked about in a different video was redox reactions. In this video, I'm going to be talking about another word which we can use to describe reactions. And that word is disproportionation. Disproportionation. In AS chemistry, we often use disproportion. We often look at disproportionation reactions when we're looking at reactions involving halogens. So group seven elements. And um, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the reactions which, which can occur, some of the disproportionation reactions which can occur between halogens and cold dilute aqueous alkali solutions. So if I just use X now to represent a, a halogen, so X, and that would be a diatomic in the diatomic form, so X2. And this was to react with a some sort of alkali, so maybe sodium hydroxide, so NaOH. When this reacts, what it's actually going to form is NaXO and NaCl, well not Cl since this is just X, NaX and H2O. So it's going to form those three products. Now, disproportionation, this word is used to describe a reaction in which an element is both oxidized and reduced. So as in when we're not talking about redox in like, okay, one element is being oxidized whilst a different element is being reduced. What we're talking about is the same element is being oxidized and reduced. So in this particular reaction, if we take a look at the ionic equation, so let me just quickly um, write out the ionic equation for this reaction. So it's going to be X2 and Na is an ion on both sides. So we're going to just cancel out the Na's on, on both sides. So to balance this equation, I'm going to need to put a two in there. So two, two NaOH. And so I think that, yeah, that balances now. Two NaOH. And so we've got two Na's on this side and two Na's on that side. And they both cancel out to when you're writing out the ionic equation. So X2 plus OH minus react to produce, produce XO minus because of Na plus. So it's going to be XO minus plus X minus plus H2O. And this is going to be 2OH minus so that the equation is balanced. Plus 2OH minus. And you can see the charges balance as well on both sides of the equation. Now, if we actually look at the oxidation numbers here, the oxidation number of the X2 here is going to be 0 since it's bonded to itself. Uh, the oxidation number of X here is going to be, since it's bonded to oxygen, and this particular reaction represents any given halogen except for fluorine. So if we take a look at the, this this um, table I've got here, this shows the pooling scale of electronegativities, and the higher number means more electronegative. So if we look here, fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen, but all of the other halogens are less electronegative than oxygen. So this uh, particular reaction I'm looking at does not involve fluorine. So any halogen except for fluorine. And so the X2, when it reacts, is going to form XO minus. And the oxidation number of oxygen is going to be 2 minus, as usual. Whereas the oxidation number of the halogen is going to be, uh, to balance this out, since 2 minus needs to be added to something to make just 1 minus, it needs to be added to 1. So the oxidation number of the X is going to be plus 1. And over here, the oxidation number of the X minus is just the charge on it. So it's going to be minus 1. So just looking at the X, uh, the, the different uh, oxidation numbers of the X in this equation, we can see that from X here to X in this particular compound, the um, the X has been oxidized, its oxidation number has gone up. Now from X, which is oxidation number zero here, and it's gone to minus one, we can see that it's been reduced. And so this single element has been both oxidized and it's been reduced. So therefore, therefore it's a disproportionation reaction. And this reaction 
occurs between the different halogens and if we take a take a look at an example of um of one of the halogens reacting like this to form form the um to, to form the different products which i wrote up here so let's take bromine for example and bear in mind the reason why this is able to happen is because oxygen is more electronegative than than whatever halogen so oxygen is able to remain its usual oxidation state <laughs> okay so let me draw out br2 and i'm going to use i'm probably going to use yeah brown for this so i've got brown now uh br2 and that reacts with the 2oh minus no well 2 2naoh 2naoh and that produces the NABRO. And anytime I look at this, I think it says NABRO. So. And then it produces NABR, which is sodium bromide. And it produces um, the H2O. Now, this particular, um, this particular compound here is often referred to as being sodium bromate sodium bromate and since the bromide the bromine in this particular molecule has an oxidation number of one we often put the one here so this is sodium bromate i and if it was chlorine it would be sodium chlorate and um maybe iodine iodine sodium iodate so yeah that's how the naming would be of this particular part and so this would be sodium bro bromide like usual and so on so yeah so that's how a disproportionation reaction can occur and in the next video i'll be taking a look at how this can happen with chlorine to form bleach so yeah i hope you guys found this video helpful and i'll see you guys in the next video